Hey, this morning uh, we're following right along here with giving you some equipment to engage yourself in holy warfare. You'll see up on the screen there the title of our message this morning is Unapologetic Words of Truth. And I'd like for you to open up your Bibles. If you need a Bible, we have Bibles on the back table. They are available for you to take if you need one. They are free. But open up your Bibles. It is a very good way to get and keep retention as we read together. There will be several verses. Uh, some will be up on the screen as we flip through uh, the message this morning. But open up God's Word, His Holy Word, with me to the Ephesians chapter 4. We're going to read verse 15 and 16. So open up to Ephesians chapter 4. Begin reading with me at verse 15. Say amen if you're there. All right. It begins, and it says, But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Verse 16, From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. When we see a scripture that begins with but or therefore, it's important to stop and read the before and the after so that we know the full context of what this verse is telling us. So in this case here, Paul writes this letter to the Ephesians, and he is reminding those that are born again. If you go to the verse just before in Ephesians 4, go to verse 14, and it says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight trickery, the slight means of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. And then following verses 15 and 16 in Ephesians chapter 4, we read further. Again, verse 15 said, but speak, speaking the truth in love so that we may, reading from verse 15 actually, so that we may, that's a choice, not so that we can Understand, remember what our grammar rules were. May gives you that choice. It's may I. It's with permission. Can is a command, able. That you may, your choice, grow up into him in all things here. So in order to not be tossed to and fro, like it said in verse 14, to be tossed around with every wind of doctrine and with all of the different things that are in the media and all the different wavelengths that are going out right now, we must be, as verse 15 says, speaking the truth in love, speaking His Word speaking God's holy promises and commandments in decreeing and declaring exactly what He, our Lord and Savior, has promised to each and every one of us. Amen? Verses 17 and 18, we're still in Ephesians 
chapter 4, then gives us the scenario. If we do not speak the truth in love and grow up into him, if we choose to ignore the fact that our words carry weight and that we must speak that word in the truth and the love of the Lord Jesus, if we ignore that, then it goes into verse 17 and says, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated, alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. I just thank God that his word is true and that it always gives us the direction and that it is always one that we can go to it and know that it is trusted. Numbers 23 verse 19 said, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Behold, verse 20 of Numbers 23, I have received commandment to bless, and he has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. This is in the middle of the the context here when Balak was hired, when it was Balaam trying to curse God's people. And he submitted to listening to Balak. Balak wanted to defeat the Israelites. And so he hired Balaam, a prophet of the Lord, to go and curse God's people. And every time he did, we know the story. Every time he tried to, he could not. Because God's word is holy. He is not a man that is going to lie. When he has said, I am blessing this country, I am blessing your family, I am blessing your situation, he cannot reverse it. Because it is has been spoken. We're talking about the power of spoken words here. Go to that next screen, please. Dr. Tony Evans once used this quote. He said, there are two answers to every question. God's answer and everybody else's. And everybody else is wrong. That's what we look at it. Honestly, we can pick apart, we can try to analyze, we can try to see how it should fit in. But when God has spoken, when his word declares the promises for you and I, it is something we can stand on. And he is always right. Tony Evans goes on to say, God has spoken. And he does not stutter. Did you catch that? God has spoken. All the way from the very beginning. God has spoken. And he doesn't make mistakes. He does not stutter. He does not go back on the things that he has spoken. The words of his mouth are a sure foundation. Can I get an amen? And this is where I chose today's title. Unapologetic words of truth. Truth that you and I are to be speaking out, even as we heard already this morning, in love and in faith, 
and not apologizing for what God's word says. His word. His word is perfection. His word is ever relevant. His word speaks to all issues for all of life. Yet we hear it every day, heard, saying, well, you just have to let people do what they feel is right and respect what they want. Okay, they're right. We cannot make choices for other people. And to respect their wishes is entirely correct. But, does that make God's word of none effect? Absolutely not. We are advised to speak the truth in love. And the answer to every problem, to every difficult situation, in each and every illness, every issue and every confrontation is found in this holy Bible right here. Words that were written by the inspiration of God and, in, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Amen? 2 Timothy 3.16 is exactly what that says. That, it continues in that, 2 Timothy 3.16, that the man and woman of God may be perfect, truly finished unto all good works. Yes, I said that word right. Truly finished. You see, there is, in some translations, they will intersperse thoroughly and truly. And, yes, they are very, very similar, but I wanted to make sure you understood that that those two words, thoroughly and truly, can be thought of as an outside versus inside starting point. Thoroughly works on the issue from the outside towards the inside. I have thoroughly washed the car, okay? Thoroughly works from the inside toward the outside. Thoroughly furnished, the word says, unto all good works begins in your heart. On the inside, thoroughly furnished, completely, absolutely done, but it starts right here as we surrender to the Lord. Amen? And it is this word that will give us the essentials to make it in these end times that are coming upon this earth. There is tribulation coming, and we will see it. And he has already spoken. You see, God has already defined a marriage. You see, God has already defined gender. You see, God identifies your identity. God defines what it means, listen to me now, to be parents and how children should respond. God defines religion and how the church operates. He has spoken on how the citizens of a nation are supposed to act. God defines sexuality. We don't. Saying it like it is. Take their wokeness or whatever they want to call it. We are not going to be subject 
to what they say. It's just like we heard in the word this morning. You are a product of God Almighty made through his love. You heard it. When we start to redefine issues like these, you better know that there's going to be confusion in every evil work. That's what you see. As pastors and as leaders of churches across all of this world, we must speak the unapologetic truth of God's word. Amen? And it must become the current standard by which all issues are addressed, by which all people must conform, and by which all systems must be adjusted. If we would truly turn back to be a nation, a people of God, there would be amazing things happening, no matter how high or how low, regardless of political, social, or economic position, Christians must never kowtow to the culture or the media's bias. I'm just saying it like it is. The leaders in this house, the leaders in this city, the leaders in this state, this country must speak with spiritual authority and Holy Ghost power. This is a season right now for preaching the full counsel of God's word with grace, but without apology. Paul wrote in Romans First chapter, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For what? It's the, come on, help me, power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Hey, come on. This is a time for us to stand up and boldly declare God's holy word here. In the gospel, go, excuse me, go to the next screen, please. The desire of God has always been relationship with his people. Always has been. I mean, you can go back into Genesis chapter 1 and go back through when it says that God, after man had sinned, was walking in the cool of the day. Do you think that was an appointed time that Adam had with his maker? Yeah. It was a time that God looked forward to talking with Adam as he was walking in the cool of the day. And he couldn't find him. And he called out. Yeah, God speaks. And we hear his voice. Adam, where are you? Adam, my friend, my child, where are you? I'm here. We always got together at this time. Where are you? I'm missing you. Our God desires relationship, not rules, not religion. I mean, come on, if we look at the third chapter of the Gospel of John, relationship is explained to a man named Nicodemus. I won't read the whole thing there, I'll paraphrase here, but Nicodemus was a Pharisee, a ruler, a leader of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered, But he didn't say, oh, thank you, Nick. 
That's cool. Let's do a fist bump. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. God's doing good things. Yeah. No. His answer was, unless a man is born again, you will never see the kingdom of God. Why did he answer that? Because Nicodemus knew that he was seeing something, he was feeling something. But he was not submitting to the relationship that God had defined him to be, and that is where we are missing it. Jesus said, unless you're born again, you have no part in the kingdom. Nicodemus went on to say in that gospel of John chapter 3, and he said, I don't get it. Do you mean I've got to go back, find my mother, I've got to crawl back into her womb, into her belly, and come out again? Is that what you're saying? I don't get it, Jesus. And Jesus just looked at him and said, how can this be? You, a ruler, a leader, a worshiper, and you don't understand what it means to have communion with me. He said, you must be born again. And I thank God that his word is clearly. Jesus answered in verse 5, he said, I say to thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. In today's culture, especially here in Western culture, there are far too many people who can speak excellent Christianese and have a relationship with religion, but do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Far too many. We need to change that. Sadly, many people, young and old alike, know way too much from that three-by-six screen that can hardly be taken away from their hand. You can hardly shake a person's hand without them fumbling, putting their, their phone away. They are more familiar with that than anything. More familiar with that than to take time with the Lord in undistracted, intentional prayer and conversation with their maker. Amos chapter 3, verse 3 poses this question. Can two walk together except they be agreed? The question is out there for you and I to answer. It's a sobering question. Can we, are we able to walk with our maker if you are not in agreement with him? Romans chapter 1, verses 21 through 24. We can put those verses up on the screen if you'd like. So Romans 1, 21 then describes what happens when an individual or a family or a church or a nation departs from God. It reads, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Verse 22, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Verse 24, wherefore God also gave them up. You heard it right. Gave them up. Not his choice. You hear me? God gave them up because man turned from him, as we just read there. Gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. 
we are seeing this happen. That is why we pray earnestly for this nation. That through everything, people would return and be reconciled to God. You know, I think through this pandemic that there's been many, many Christians who have had the time, taken the time to examine themselves. And after persevering through some real challenges of health, of sickness, of disappointments, of death, economic issues, they've come to be more close to the Lord. I know, speaking just from a personal standpoint, that the intentional and the specific time that I have been before the Lord praying for wisdom, praying for help, I have grown to more fully know and appreciate the relationship with our Father, Abba. That's what it's all about. And there's no apology for seeking God. There is no apology for saying yes to the Lord when we read in Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God. Go to that next screen, please. We're talking about the creative power of God's word. And it brings me to the second half of this message here, speaking the truth. I can't emphasize enough how absolutely essential it is that we understand the creative power of our spoken words. I mean, take the situation of many of you. We heard again one this morning. Could have, in their sickness, could have gotten very depressed, gotten very beat down, very disappointed. But instead, creative power of God's spoken word issued forth life. Drawn here from some inspiration from a message recently that I heard preached by Creflo Dollar. He said this, words are like spiritual containers. They're like triggers. They will carry faith or they will carry fear. Producing fruit after its own kind. Carry faith, you're going to have faith. Carry fear, you get what you got. Proverbs 6, verse 2 reads, Thou art snared, you're captured with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. And quite honestly, most Christians are defeated in life because of believing and confessing the wrong things. Again, just saying it like it is. Words are the most powerful thing in the universe. We read through the first chapter of Genesis. And as he, God Almighty, the Word created everything, it declares, and God said, let there be light. And God said, spoken words. And God said, again, the words of the mouth from the word, Jesus Christ, God Almighty. And God said, and then on the last day, it says, and God saw. He spoke it. It came into existence, and all he had to do was look. Here it is. But he said it, and 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 then he could see 
that all that he had made was very, very good. Amen? So we read in verses 27 and 28 of Genesis chapter 1, it says, So God created man in his own image. <laughs> in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them, and God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and, listen, have dominion hmm. over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. We, you and I, right now, today, must carry this kingdom authority over to our spoken words. Are you hearing me? Notice that I said spoken words. Not the same as wishful thinking. Not the same as, well, I've got good thoughts towards the Lord, and, and I, I know, you know, I think of him. Spoken words have authority. Spoken words have creative authority. Am I coming across? It's one thing to say that you believe God's word and that you believe God's promises. But are we being bold enough to also say it? Proverbs 18 says in verse 4, the words of a man's mouth are as deep waters and the wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook goes on further in that same 18th chapter of Proverbs. In verse 21 it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat, what? The fruit thereof. It really is pretty simple. We eat what we speak. And I'm not talking absolutely don't take me to the other end. That all we have to do is just have positive confession. I am talking, let's bring it back to the middle, I'm talking about a relationship with God Almighty that when you speak, you know the authority that he gave to you. Can I get another amen? Ephesians 5, verse 1 says and encourages us, be followers of God as dear children. The New American Standard Bible translation reads this way, therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children. You see, God kind of faith believers will speak in faith. They will speak the faith that has first been thoroughly furnished in their heart. They know their creator. We should always remind ourselves that man is a spirit. You and I, we are a spirit, which means we are capable of speaking faith like our creator. And that we, you and I, man possesses a soul. And you and I, we, a man, lives in a body. The breath of God, the word and the spirit, was breathed into the nostrils with the breath of life. And the word says man became a living soul being. This always humbles, totally amazes me of the, the creation story of how God Almighty would take what he had created already, what he had already spoken, yeah, into existence, take it, the dust, the ground, form it, and then breathe his breath to form a man. 
Our God is so incredibly amazing and good. You cannot read that story. You cannot look and go over that part of the scripture without getting at least a big lump in your throat and tears to your eyes of, my God, how you have made me so wonderfully. Hallelujah. And then given dominion, just like we just read. Power and authority. The ability to love and to have a two-way relationship with God. Yeah, I said two-way. God, he'll never forsake you. He is always for you. His eyes are always upon you. We make the choice to return that breath, that praise, that life right back to him. Amen? Romans chapter 10. Turn with me. Open. Romans 10 verse 17 says this. So then faith cometh by hearing. This is how faith works. Faith comes by hearing and, help me again, hearing by the Word of God. The Word of God that spoke all things into existence. Faith comes by hearing that Word and hearing by the Word of God. We don't have to apologize for speaking his word and promises in faith because it also says in Psalm 89 verse 34 my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips well that ought to excite you okay go back and read it again Psalm 89 verse 34 my covenant and we understand, we've talked about this before, when God makes a covenant, he establishes it with blood. And it can not ever, ever, no matter what, ever be broken. And he says, I have established it, I will not break it, and I will not alter, I won't change, I won't do anything different then what I have spoken, nothing that you hear coming out of my lips, God says, is going to happen. And that's powerful. His word needs to be spoken boldly because it also says in Psalm 119, verse 89, it declares, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled, it's established in heaven. Let's go to that next screen. So here's a key point. Faith will always come from surrender, not striving. We cannot work up faith by simply having positive thoughts. Not going to happen. Not going to do you any good. You cannot take a seed that's dead I remember finding a pack of seeds that we had in our shed uh, one year and thought, well, you know, got to be okay. Didn't look any different than the way I originally bought them, but they'd been there forever, all right, and they were dead. There, there's no life in them. We can't take a seed that is dead and expect it to produce any fruit, it just doesn't happen. We have to take that seed of faith and plant it in holy ground. Matthew 16, verse 19 says, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. Understanding this, that when you and I speak and confess whatever it is 
whether it's finances, whether it's for health, whether it's for situations in your marriage, with your kids, with your family, name it. Whenever you speak, whatever you say, understand that you are loosening that same power in heaven. When you say, I am healed, when you go to Isaiah 53 and you read out loud and you say, Lord Jesus Christ, your word says that you bore the stripes and by your stripes, I am healed. When you take that and you confess that and your words come out and you start boldly in faith speaking that, you can realize that that same healing has been loosened in heaven. What's the Lord's Prayer say? On earth as it is in heaven. That's his command. That's exactly how he laid it out. That's how he commanded his disciples to even pray. In Mark 9, verse 23, some powerful words that we hear often. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Faith has substance. Faith has substance. It's real. Because we also read in Matthew 17, verse 20, when they brought to him a child that was getting torn by the enemy, demon-possessed, tearing him into convulsions, and they prayed for him but it would not come out. Matthew 17, 20, after the disciples came to him and said, how come you came, you prayed, you spoke, and the demons had to leave? How come? And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, the New American Standard Bible says, the littleness, because of the littleness of your faith. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, just that much, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Again, the same thought that Jesus wanted us to understand is expressed in Mark 11, verse 23. Mike, I'm going to have you come up. For verily, Mark 11, 23, for verily I say unto you, again, the words of Jesus, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. I say it's time to speak to our mountains. I say it's time that we examine ourselves and that relationship that God has made a way for each one of us to have. If you have surrendered your life and you have asked him to come into your heart, surrendered, then he has made a way for you to be speaking to your mountains. Let's go to that last screen in closing. I understand faith in this way. Got it written up on the screen for you. If all that I see is what I see, then I do not see all that there is to be seen. You see, Hebrews 11, verse 1 said, 
to us. Now faith is the substance. It's got weight. It's real. It's the assurance in our hearts that he understands our very nature. I mean, Jesus said, I died for you so that I could be your high priest intercessor. I could be the one that goes before you when you speak. So do you see, if we're just silent, if we don't say anything, if we're just positive thinking, it doesn't have the same effect, doesn't have the same meaning because Jesus Christ is taking our prayers, our tears, straight to the throne room. Verse 2 of Hebrews 11 says that because faith has substance, the elders obtained a good report. They gained approval because they had faith in God. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid. Or even backward in your spoken faith. I mean, tell me, isn't that how you know that you are saved in the first place? I mean, what's Romans 10.10? 10? Should be a verse you can rattle right off there. With the heart, man believes, and with his mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Hmm. Seems like we nailed it. Our mouth what we declare, what we decree has been ordained by God because he gave to you and I the power and the authority to do the works of Jesus. <laughs> Is God good? Don't ever let thoughts seize you of, well, I don't want to say something and then it not happen. You're digging the wrong way there. Why say that? When God has given us the promise. And don't ever say, well, I don't know if I've got enough faith. Why go there? When his word clearly says, to every man has been given the measure of faith. <laughs> we heard last week, in last week's message, that in order to have a clear vision, we need to do certain things. We need to be adding logs and things to the fire to keep the fire burning. But always knowing that if we follow the vision that is set before us. He has already gone before us and did what? He made the provision. Is that right? And don't ever let thoughts come to your head saying, well, if I say something bold or if I say something, you know, commanding that I'm just going to get a whole pack of demons chasing me to make me eat my words. Understand who you are. Understand what God made you to be. He loves you. He's given you all that we need. And if he says greater <laughs> is he that is in you than he that is in the world 
That's truth. That's just what it is. Let's be unapologetically on fire for the Lord. Leviticus 6, 13. The Lord spoke to Moses and he said, Command Aaron and his sons. This is how I want the burnt offerings to be done. And in verse 13, it talked about how the wood needed to be laid on that altar. But then it says, the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. So this morning, let's stand to our feet. Let's be assured that we can add more logs to the fire of God. Let's be more determined than we ever have before that we are going to be a mouthpiece for the Lord. Amen.